think knows about that. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes. And I think there's a bit of sneakiness going on here where they, what are they mainly concerned about here? What's his main sale. motive? A sale, simple yeah. as that. That's all he wants, really. And he knows that by giving full information, he's unlikely to get that sale. And that's what the courts will look at. They'll look at the intention of the salesperson um, and then make a judgment based on that. Right, okay, so moving on then, uh, types of misrepresentation. The most worst form of misrepresentation is what we call fraudulent. And the case of Darian Peak defines fraudulent mis misrepresentation simply as where um, a false statement So fraudulent misrepresentation, uh, a false statement is made knowingly and the maker of the statement does not care that they have told a lie. That's what fraudulent misrepresentation is all about. So based on what Dave has said, you've got to work out whether that statement was made knowingly with the aim of deceiving uh, any potential purchasers. You've got to think about that and then compare it to the other two that we're going to look at in a minute. So don't forget, in your assignment uh, answer, you would have to, apart from defining what misrepresentation is, you would have to explain uh, the different types. And the first one is fraudulent misrepresentation. So somebody's well aware that they're telling you a lie and they confidently still go on to express that lie to you. Fraudulent misrepresentation. Did that happen in this case? Have a little thing. Let's have a look at the next type of misrepresentation, and that's what we call negligent misrepresentation. There's a case called Heavy Burn and Heller. Um, you can find these on West Law, so have a quick look at West Law. But negligent misrepresentation is where a professional makes a statement that turns out to be wrong. Mm -hmm. statement. So if a professional, and I put usually so the board's a bit uh, out of sync at the moment, but usually this is where a professional makes a statement that turns, that word, that turns out to be wrong. Okay. So it's not that they are deliberately telling you a lie, but because they're a professional it's automatically assumed that they really should know what they're talking about. So if they give you any information that turns out to be wrong, then it's more likely that they're not fraudulently negligent, negligent rather they're more likely to be um, negligent in the statement that they make. So again, you've got to ask yourself, does this apply to Dave? And that's why we highlighted 20 years experience. He's uh, sold an item to a, a, a customer which has turned out to be wrong. Section 2, subsection 1 of the Misrepresentation Act simply gives you an example of when somebody would make a negligent misrepresentation. And that's a, a better way of claiming a remedy under section 2, subsection 1. Okay? So, what's the statement made by a professional? It seems that that's the case here. 
Was the statement wrong in the sense that the item wasn't fit for purpose? Yes, that's what happened here, and therefore it's more likely that Dave could be or could have made a negligent misrepresentation. And the last type of misrepresentation, nearly at the end of the presentation, is innocent misrepresentation. And that's exactly what it means, innocent. Somebody makes a statement believing in its truth. as an innocent misrepresentation, it simply means that you genuinely believe that the information you're giving is true. Unfortunately, if it turns out to be wrong, then tend to speak in the court and I'm going to blame you, because there's no malice in, in what you did. So there are three types of misrepresentation, fraudulent, negligent, and innocent. Which one do you think might apply here? If you're not sure, which is the most obvious one that applies here? Negligent. Negligent, absolutely. Because we've said Dave had 20 years' experience. So if someone's given you all that information about the nature of the item they want to purchase, then it's very obvious that the information you give should be professional, because you are a professional with sufficient information. Uh, right, remedies then, don't forget we've already looked at remedies under the sale of goods at 1979. Uh, We're now looking at remedies under misrepresentation. Okay. So the first type of remedy is what we call rescission. Rescission simply refers to the right to rescind. Rescind means to cancel. So what you would suggest to Dave is that you want to cancel the contract because you have no car to show for the money that you've paid. So rescission is a remedy that allows you to cancel the contract. And it, generally speaking, it has the same effect. Uh, as compensation. Uh, Jan? Yes. Uh, are these remedies unlikely free of the distress? Uh, right, generally speaking, yes. Maybe for fraudulent, but yes, they are available for, um, for uh, the three, yes. Yeah. So, rescission, cancel the contract, if you cancel the contract, you get your money back. Damages, same thing, you get compensation equal to the amount of the item that you've lost. And then the, the next one, indemnity, is similar to damages, however sometimes it's not the same amount of money that you get. That's the main difference between damages and an indemnity. So an indemnity you get an amount of money back, but it may not be enough to uh, purchase another car of similar value. So you said it wouldn't be going for an indemnity. Yes, Tom? It's compensation for it. Damages, yeah. Damages is compensation. Okay. Yeah. Drinking is now on my tape. I can't see I can turn it around if you want. No. <laughs> no <fine>. Right, okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so there are the three main uh, types of remedies. I think the most obvious one that Amina will be going for will be damages. So, when you think about it, the whole scenario is about somebody who suffered a misfortune of paying £12,000 for an item that's not fit for purpose. Now, it's, it's a top satisfactory quality. She's been told a lie. That's a fraudulent misrepresentation, and she's seeking your advice on how she can make things better. And that's the whole essence of P3. And on that note, um, do we have any questions at all? Yes, uh, how long should the task be? Right, okay, but it's P3, so I would imagine uh, 800 words, something like that. So an A4 front and back. 
However, if you cover everything, including all the necessary cases, if, even if it's on one page, as long as it deals with everything we've spoken about, so talk about the contract, talk about the rights and obligations, talk about the remedies that you might have under the sale of goods of 1979, talk about the definition of misrepresentation, the type of misrepresentation, and the remedies available. And if you can cover all that, then that should hopefully answer the question um, correctly. Uh, let me just double check, yeah, draw your conclusions, and that is a quick summary of P3. Any questions at all? Otherwise I can slowly migrate towards the camera and turn it off, and then you can start swearing. No, 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 no,